Thank you for staying with us. Uh, this is News Central Television, and, and the program, of course, is Report Desk Africa. We like to call it RDA, for those who are watching us for the first time. And if you're just joining us, well, you haven't missed anything. We only introduced our topics for today, and we're going straight into the very first one, talking about Africa's giant, like Ni, my colleague, mentioned, Nigeria. Now, Nigeria welcomed the new leader on May the 29th, as Bola Ahmed Tinubu became Nigeria's 16th president. Still, yeah, I'm still getting used to calling him President Tinubu. I still have President Buhari in my head, but I'm sure it will, it will catch up with me. Now, in his inaugural speech, the new president made some promises to the citizens of the country as he seized the opportunity to make pronouncements as regards the priority of his administration. Now, the new president promised to create at least one million jobs for Nigerians, especially the youth. He also revealed that security will be his administration's top priority while mentioning that subsidy will be gone. Nigerians are feeling that already. <laughs> now, a topic we would focus on during the second segment of the program, that's talking about the subsidy remover. But first, let's take a look at this uh, package by our Abuja Bureau Chief, uh, who was at the scene of the inauguration, talking about Eagle Square in Abuja. It's a much-awaited inauguration for Nigeria's President Bola Tinubu as he takes over to become the nation's fifth president since the return of democracy in 1999. In attendance were dignitaries, including several African presidents, even a delegation from the President of the United States government. The event commenced first with a march passed by Nigeria's armed forces as senior government officials and dignitaries were called up to the VIP section. Then there was an inspection of the guards of honor by the incoming president. After taking the oath of office and receiving the nation's flag from Nigeria's former president, Muhammadu Buhari, signifying the commencement of a new administration, President Tunubu promised to run a government of inclusion and transformation. We shall consult a dialogue would never be paid. We shall reach out to all, but never put down a single person for holding view contrary to our own. The National Parade Troop gave a beautiful performance to show Nigeria's culture and unity in diversity. The military also took time to perform a change of guard ceremony. Some Nigerians New Central spoke to expressed their excitement, saying they are confident of a new era for the nation. Um, he's worked hard, he's prepared for this moment, and we are definitely sure he will deliver on his promises to our country, Nigeria. There are issues with the economy, issues with security, issues with unemployment, etc., etc. The, the belief is that where there is a will, there is a way, and that man has the will. Ashiwaju has come to bring the same panache and touch like he did in Lagos. I am very pleased and happy, and I appeal to all Nigerians who voted to be patient that Ashiwaju will deliver. What he's looking for when he said the Emilio come is that it's my turn to try and change the narrative. And I want to tell all Nigerians to come, love him, support him, especially my Igbo brothers and sisters. We are very optimistic that the poverty in the land is going to be eradicated, killings is going to be put to an end, Nigeria will begin to move together as one. We have suffered enough. Eight years have been eight years of suffering. Yes, of course, Buhari has done his best and made progress in the best way he could. Nigerians have to be understand that we have only one government at a time. And no matter what your own personal preferences may be, when the people have chosen, the people have chosen. So we should work with the government. President Bola Ahmed Tinubu a shrewd politician and a strategist. And irrespective of whatever dissenting view or objection people might have to it, he is the man now that everyone must obey. And we're going to be talking about all the plans and the expectations Nigerians are having, and of course, all the things he has promised during his campaign, and he even mentioned during the inaugural speech that he's going to be dealing with, and some that have already started taking effect. Now, joining us to discuss this is a media and communication expert, Taiwo Olokbadi, and New Century's correspondent, Aun Dakbo Adigui. 
Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us. Me, thank you for having me, Bennett. And of course, uh, what a beautiful time to have uh, this kind of conversation. Uh, yeah, well, I know, I know we're talking politics, but you're beginning to sound like a politician. I'm why telling you, why you're so, so, so cool already. You sound so cool. Are you sure you've not gotten the portfolio already? Uh, at all. <laughs> not, not, not at all. I, I haven't. But, I mean, it's a new dawn for Nigeria. Uh, before we, I mean, the administration is still fresh. So, mm. come on. Yeah, of course. And before watching. we go on, let's quickly huh? welcome uh, Ni Yolokpade as well, also uh, joining us in the house. Uh, good evening, Ni. Thank you for joining. Taiwa, I beg your pardon. Ni is already. Don't worry, I understand. <laughs> Taiwa, thank you for joining us. Yeah. Okay, so we're glad to have you. So let's, let's just discuss, gentlemen. Now, first of all, as a journalist who has witnessed other inauguration ceremonies in Nigeria, what will you say was different about this particular one? I'll start from me first before I move to you because I was present at August State at the MK Abiola Stadium, and I know I was heavily, heavily drenched in the rain from the beginning to the end. Uh, gentlemen, just please share your experiences. I'll start from um, Tao. For me, I would say that uh, this particular one was um, what kind of stood out was, um, uh, well, I call it the smoothness of the process. We know that in the past, we've had uh, several inaugurations uh, where we've seen, you know, transition of power. But this particular one seemed almost seamless. Maybe because the outgoing president really was tired of the old <laughs> process and just was in a haste to hand over, right? You know, we, we just saw the old thing just move uh, pretty much orderly. Even the attendance, I'm talking about at the federal level now, uh, in Abuja, the Eagle Square, was fully packed. And also, the array of people that attended, uh, from the business uh, sector to foreign friends of the country. We saw presidents of Senegal, we saw of Ghana, uh, we saw uh, that of uh, Rwanda too. I mean, quite a number, South Africa. We saw quite a number of them, you know, that were in attendance. In the business space too, we saw the likes of Aliko Dangote or Ted Dollar. It was indeed, you know, uh, full of pomp and pageantry. And also this particular inauguration, uh, as much as, you know, the election process had its own hiccups, we also saw that uh, quite, I mean, the attendance was, was pretty massive, mm -hmm. right? And um, uh, there, there was a lot of applause. But uh, aside all of that, uh, let's look at the inaugural speech of Mr. President, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we saw that uh, he decided to hit the ground running. As a matter of fact, uh, I was in the studio that day, and he said quite a number of things. He touched on some of the key issues that you know, are, is affecting Nigerians at the moment. He talked about the economy, talked about education, you know, talked about eliminating poverty, uh, talked about uh, promoting the GDP, ensuring that the country you know, experiences a rise in the GDP you know, above 6%. But one thing he talked about and seemed to hit the ground running almost immediately was when he, you know, talked on the issue of subsidy. I don't think I've seen, uh, <laughs> in my years of witnessing inauguration, where a president would just make a pronouncement and it takes effect almost, almost immediately. Almost immediately. So, Dako, let's, let's hold that thought there yeah. because uh, we don't so want to let me, the So, for me, you asked what stood out. out I think of, for me that stood out. Yet. So I'm thinking we should hold the thought on the fuel scarcity yet. And yeah. let's, let's, let's just focus on what his plans are. Mm. And I remember during his uh, um, campaign and so many other things, Bennett, if you bear me witness, Definitely. He, he was speaking about the budgetary reform, promoting domestic manufacturing, removal of the fuel subsidy, which will form a later part of our conversation. Uh, what do we see moving forward now from, from most of these things? Um, I, I think, um, of course, these, these are going to take quite a, a process uh, for him to eventually achieve. Let's, let's know that uh, even though he's, he belongs to the ruling All Progressives Congress Party, there still are other um, party members in, in, in the House, basically, who may oppose some of the things that he has set out to do. But of course, nobody will deny a good thing. So if it's in favor of all Nigerians, and I think they will let those things fly. Now, there are some, there are some if I can call for this, uh, there are some of the uh, things that the president said in his inaugural speech, um, if we can have that on the screen, I, I would like to point out uh, there. Now, he said, our administration shall govern on your behalf, but never rule over you. We shall consult and dialogue, but never dictate. We shall reach out to all, but never put down a single person 
for holding views contrary to our own. Now, I know that these statements, of course, every president, you know, of comes course, out to say mantra. But, but saying that, you know, what he's basically saying is that this government will be all inclusive. And he clearly will be held accountable if his government eventually is not all inclusive. And well, already there are people calling and, and saying, if you say your government to be all inclusive, how come you just hit the ground running and took away subsidy without involving, uh, uh, yeah, you know, um, exactly, uh, bodies. you know, bodies who, who would speak on that? So there, there just might be some. Um, I mean, it, it started already. Mm -hmm. There's just uh, there are eyebrows raising, you know, already at how will I say how effectively or how uh, intensely. The, his, his particular regime started by hitting to. the ground. Dapo, these are some I, of the things we're looking at. Fixing mm. the economy, mm. uh, debt burden, uh, pending legal challenges. Let's not leave that out because we're still waiting for the tribunal to give its own verdict. Mm. Although, from record, we know that uh, no, we know that no uh, sitting government has been overturned by the Supreme Court ruling mm -hmm. in the election, uh, election tribunal. We have getting a grip on security, which is very, very important. And of course, lack of popular support from a diverse group of people who are still in support of other parties. And from personal concerns, from some percentage of Nigeria, is health. Mm. Taiwo, let's have your view on some of these things that uh, Bola, President Bola Tinubu is now inheriting. How do you think he's going to be able to tackle this? Well, uh, thank you so much for having me. I'm so delighted to be on your show this evening. Uh, first and foremost, uh, the issue of the inauguration on May 29th. I can say that uh, it was a thing of delight uh, for many Nigerians in the sense that uh, there were so many sweet sayers who have predicted that uh, the May 19th, and then uh, simultaneously, as it was taking place, uh, the federal capital. Well, we, we wait, wait for, for Taiwo's yeah. connection to get better. Let's go straight into this now, Dr. Um, Of course, now there are many people who are saying that uh, the new president, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, it has to grow on me. I'm still not, uh, <laughs> I still haven't gotten a grasp of that. That new president, Tinubu, was widely credited for the way he reshapened um, the country's commercial hub, talking about Lagos State. But then Lagos State is different from Nigeria. One out of 36 we, states. Exactly. Do we think that we can judge his success, or rather we can attribute um, his intended success of, of ruling the country to what he did in Lagos State? Is it okay to just pick what a governor did by transforming one state and ensuring or and thinking that he will do the same for the country? Let's not forget that Nigeria is a very, very culturally diverse state two, on its two, own. 200 million. Over 200 million people. Ah. Different ethnic, ethnic groups and tribes, different languages, different tongues, mm -hmm. different cultures. Can hmm. it be the same thing? Can we expect that what he did in Lagos will manifest again in Nigeria? <laughs> well, in business, they will tell you start small, grow big, right? Mm. Uh, and, I mean, the only way you can actually, you know, prove competence is people would ask, what is your antecedent? Let's look at the three major candidates that vied for office. Peter Obitu would always make reference to when he was governor mm. of an Amber state. I think the only person with a far more, will I call it a, 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 a nationalistic uh, platform or portfolio is Atiku Abubakar, who was once vice president, right? Bola Tinubu, Yes, he was former governor of Lagos State, but you cannot also you know, uh, erase the fact that uh, he has also made national strides, you know, even after being governor. So for me, I think that you can use the m micro to almost determine the macro, if that makes any sense. But the truth is this. I think uh, from the achievements, at least he has been able to do in Lagos State in terms of you know, ensuring that there is some sort of blueprint that is consistently followed, uh, even though some would debate it. Uh, you would also want to look at a track record of at least some level of development, infrastructural development, right? In this particular state, you know, you would also want to give him some credit on that one and say, mm. maybe in terms of the structure he has been able to put in uh, as regards governance, setting up a sort of uh, consistent uh, blueprint and also ensuring that there has been some sort of a progress in terms of infrastructural development. Uh, to a large extent, you might say, it might be able to replicate this at the federal level. Mm. Uh, well, 
only time will tell, but you also might want to, you know, give him some thumbs up for that. But again, I also want us to understand something. Let's look at where we are coming from as a nation, the past administration, uh, the, the, the challenges that are inherent, and of course the burden that he would have to uh, inherit as president right now. We know what the economy looks like. We know there are some lingering debates. Uh, part of it has to do with the subsidy, which uh, to a very large extent, he said, look, if the past administrations never had the willpower to do the needful, uh, I will do it. That tells you that this is somebody who is not just coming in to fill the blanks, but has the willpower to make certain tough decisions. Mm. So I, I, I just feel that um, it might be too early to uh, sort of conclude on certain areas, but they will tell you that it's with little drops of water that you make a mighty ocean, right? Mm. And with these little steps, at least what he has done in the past in terms of achievement, you'd want to say maybe he can put Nigeria on the path that it's meant to be. But again, uh, there are reservations. Human beings would have reservations. I have reservations. You have to. I believe every other person on the street does have. But um, just like every other administration we've had, and I remember when Buhari came in in the past, people too felt that the, the expectation was so high, right? But right now, we know what the debt uh, 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 ceiling or, or, or the debt uh, uh, situation right now is in Nigeria. So I just feel that um, it's too early to conclude on anything, right? It's barely a week into the new administration. Mm. I don't even think he has, he does not even have a cabinet yet. So, yeah, that's but, another thing that, we're looking yeah, towards. Another, yeah, mm -hmm. right? So, 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 but we can only hope that he's able to right the wrongs of the previous administration and also, maybe to a large extent, uh, set a roadmap, a progressive roadmap, because he is known to be a progressive leader. Definitely, he you is. Know, but, but let, let me quickly jump in here. Roadmap now, you, you just you just said uh, we're hoping that he would he would right the wrong of the previous administration. Let's not forget that during the campaign, he said he will continue mm -hmm. from where the previous I'll, administration I'll stopped. That. And that uh, statement I, I was think, I actually put that, that in statement, context. You know, he put what, that. What context sorry, are we talking Bernard, about here? He put that in the context because I, I I think you know that speech. He was talking about infrastructure. Well, he didn't exactly state. He, you know, are you speaking for him? Continue on that part. I'm not. I'm not a mouthpiece, please. Uh -huh. Exactly. So how are we trying Let me to clarify deduce context that. from whatever I'm not it is a mouthpiece, that he has said? But you know me. I, I would rather attack the, the issue and not and, and, and not the person. But yeah. right now, it's too early to even conclude anything. Of course, it but, doesn't even have a cabinet. So oh, well, true. Um, uh, let, let me quickly um, jump in here, Dakbo. Now, um, again, the, the cabinet thing we're talking about. We're hoping, first of all, that his own cabinet or assembling of cabinet will not be as long as it took uh, mm -hmm. former President Muhammad Buhari to assemble. And then even after assembling the cabinet, a lot of Nigerians were pretty disappointed um, after taking that long. I mean, they say if you wait so long, it should be worth it. Mm -hmm. um, that, that really wasn't the case in, in time of uh, President Muhammadu Buhari or former President Muhammadu Buhari. I will learn these things very soon. Now, um, I want to quickly talk about something. We talked about the things he said. There are also certain things that were not mentioned that certain people were looking forward to see. And I have some here I quite uh, like to read out. Now, it was still unclear whether the president, uh, where the president stands on issues of reduction in the cost of governance mm -hmm. and restructuring. Now, these are topics that have been lingering for quite a while. Restructuring, restructuring, restructuring. And then we have also complained several times about how expensive it is to run Nigeria's government. The president didn't say anything about that. Now, there are people who are of the opinion that he needs to cut down considerably on wastage in government. Now, the huge budgetary allocation on welfare and en uh, entertainment should also be removed or reduced considerably. And then finally, um, I, I read this from one of the national dailies. That's why I'm putting it out here. It said, let his government work towards scrapping the Senate or reducing the number of senators, House of Representatives, and State House of Assembly members by one third. And then finally, it also says here that um, implementation of um, the Oreson, uh, Oronsaye report oh. on mergers and acquisitions of MDAs is now highly desirable. And lastly, issue of state police and community policing also needs to be revisited. Now, these are some parts, certain things that were not exactly touched in his speech. I know that the president could have not touched everything, mm -hmm. but there are certain pressing issues that you would think we would want him to touch. The first one, um, you know, cutting down on the cost of running Nigeria's government. Nigeria's government is one of the most expensive in the world, by mm. the way. What do you think the president will do? Are we seeing the same of same, or do you think he would, you know, put an axe and just reduce the cost of running Nigeria's government? 
Okay, Bernard, I'll pick you uh, on the last one, mm. the cost of governance. Now, I'm one advocate that, would, that has been asking for almost a decade now, why do we have two houses at the federal level? I can answer that. I mean, in yeah, Nigeria. He said he can answer that. And then you have almost da, da the po, same did you, replica. Did you hear me? He eh? said he can answer I that. I said I can answer that. Okay. Now, just on a light note, why do you build a house if you're a Nigerian in Nigeria and have another one outside? Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> that and I, I, I was getting that somewhere with that. Mm. And then you also have that near that replicated at the state level. Yes. Each state has a house. Two, you have lawmakers doing mm. this at the state level. Why can Nigeria not run a one-house system? You know, but some would debate otherwise and counter it and say, oh, because of the geographical complexities of Nigeria, you know, uh, these people are overburdened. Having to have it put on just a certain amount of people would overwork them and all of that. For Christ's sake, uh, I, I mean, that's why we are where we are in terms of uh, spending so much just to run the government. But that aside, uh, uh, you asked a question that there are certain issues that you should have touched on. I also mm -hmm. have reservation. But I also understand something when it comes to governance and leadership. There's something called the piecemeal approach, mm -hmm. right? Especially when you are dealing with naughty issues. Naughty issues that require willpower. Not just being president, but the willpower to move those things. And I think one of those issues is what he addressed. And in less than 24 hours, we've seen the ripple effect. Mm. So uh, I think these are really, really big pills that are difficult to swallow. So I think maybe it's just one step at a time, you know, uh, that uh, we'll see. Maybe after he has uh, tidied that of the subsidy issue, and then they can now talk of, oh, let's talk of restructuring. Let's talk of cutting the cost of governance. Let's talk of constitutional reforms. Let's look at the Orasonye or report and see how we can adopt all of that. So I think probably with time, like I said, it's too early. It's, it's barely a week into the administration to, you know, uh, actually conclude on to be issues able to tell. yet. But for me, uh, let's just give it time and let's see. Okay, so quickly, let me just quickly add to what you just said. Uh, for me, I'm, I'm really not in support of the fact that we should have... Um, I know the two house might be not, not cost effective, but I'd rather they cut the allowances rather than reduce the house. Because mm. if you overburden the state uh, representative to also function, do oversight functions at the federal level, then there will be more colossal problem. We have longer days, longer hours they used to pass bills. Nee, we and already, really I'm not sorry what we to cut in. Now, nee, but because we're short on, because we're short on we time. Already, I, there's, I, already, there's already bureaucracy, as in very drag bureaucracy in the system already. You know what I okay. think? I think if we have it cut and uh, you have speakers at the state level representing at the federal level, then uh, government gets to the grassroots. All right, grassroots. We'll leave yes. it at that, Dapo. Okay. We'll leave but, it at that because um, I know cool. we have a lot to say about this. And we also spoke about the fact that if you want to take um, from the testament of what he has done back when he was a governor, we'll see him creating a lot of things for um, tackling security, hospitality, education, and so much more. But yeah, as you said, it's too early to really tell if all those things will, will actually, he will do something about it or we'll get to see what will happen. Thank you very much, Dapo, for joining. Us. And of course, Ty will, uh, who me. couldn't really join us throughout the show because of network. Um, don't go anywhere. We have a bumper one that we're going to be talking about, one that has affected all Nigerians. A big one at that. And it came from the first, from, not from the first statement, but from a major statement of the newly president of Nigeria, Bola Tinumbu. We'll be treating that in the next segment. Don't go anywhere. <laughs>